Carl Edwards has joined us. He drives the number 99 Fast and All Ford for Roush Fenway Racing. And um, Texas Motor Speedway has been uh, got to be one of your favorite tracks, Carl. Three wins here, five top five, six times you finished in the top ten. So talk about coming to Texas, uh, certainly. Uh, uh, i got I got to believe you're, you're anxious to get a win here tomorrow night. Yeah, it's, it's a fun racetrack for me, for our team. I was just telling the folks from Speed out there that it's nice to come to a track where if, if during practice, if you're slow or if you're, you have you know, trouble qualifying or if you're slow in the race, you know that you can fix it, you can go out and you can, you can win. You know, you ha we have that confidence. So it's, um, it's nice to, uh, you know, to sit in the race car and know that, that, that we can do this. Now, since we practice, we're, we're pretty confident with the car as it is. Uh, Greg's pretty good. Matt's pretty good, and our fast and all fusion's pretty fast. So we'll see how qualifying goes here. You know, qualifying later in the evening. Uh, there's a lot that can happen with the weather. We feel like we've got a pretty good shot at the pole, though. So just uh, just having fun. Hopefully, we can get that that fourth win here. That, that would be uh, that would be big. Questions for Carl? If you have one, raise your hand, and we'll bring you the uh, the microphone. Carl Leverett's questions right here. Bob has one, and then over here to uh, Mr. Horn. Uh, Bob Pockers from the Sporting News. I was curious, kind of, what is your opinion on what Amanda Beard wrote about you in her book and the fact that she wrote about it in the first place? Um, well, I thought about that a lot, and I, I really couldn't come up with a good uh, explanation or answer for you guys because I truly didn't know, I didn't know what to think about it. Um, I guess all I can say is I, I considered us friends, um, you know, and. Uh, and you know, I, I didn't realize that she had all those problems. I would have done anything in in the world to to have helped her with those. And uh, and as always, if uh, you know, regardless of what she writes writes in her books and things like that, if she ever needs something from me, I'd I'd be there to help her out. So yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Absolutely, but I wouldn't know where to start. I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about the psychology of feelings and opinions when you have a bad a relationship that doesn't work out um, or if I'm supposed to talk about the you know strategies to sell books or whatever I mean I can't to be honest with you guys it's, it's just weird I don't know how to address things that I don't even remember happening so that's that's tough um, you know uh, it's just it's pretty far out there out of left field for me Someone else had a question over on that side, I think. Ryan? Woody came with him. Woody, I'm sorry. Woody. Uh, Carl, just want to ask you about uh, racing at Kansas next week. It'll be the last one before they change it. I know you consider that your home track, and it's a very special place to you. Yeah. I mean, a win at Kansas, I've told you guys this, a win there would be um, – there would be no bigger win on the circuit. I mean, I wouldn't uh, – if I had to choose between winning it, you know, one race throughout the year, that would be the one I would pick. So the amount of uh, – the amount of pride that I would have winning that close to home and around in front of so many people that were that are friends of mine and people that have helped me that would that would be huge. And fortunately, we've had some some pretty good mile and a half race cars, and and now we get two shots at it each year. So th that race for me, whether it's right or wrong, I will put a little more, you know, as, as much emphasis and pressure on myself as I can to go perform well there. Oh yeah, that's. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard the plan, what they're exactly planning on doing. I don't know if they're just repaving it, if they're going to reconfigure anything. So I don't really have an opinion on that yet. Let's go to the far left corner, and then we'll go to Lee. Go ahead. Carl, there's a chance it's going to be pretty windy tomorrow. Does that change your approach at all, or does it change the race uh, overall? Well, it's been kind of windy the whole weekend, so I, I don't know that um, – I don't know if it'll change your approach to the race. It, it does make a difference. So, I mean, you stay conscious of it. You know, you, know, you want to be careful not to – ask for a change or something because it's the wind that's making the car do something but these cars are big enough and heavy enough and when you get in a pack kind of you know they they create their own little <laughs> mini environment so you know the the wind's not a, a really a huge factor go ahead lee lee spencer fox sports how stunned were you last year leaving texas in the fall you know expect maybe one of your roush teammates would win and then you know tony just comes up with this win and right. you know you were the points leader and it, it it almost seemed you know you you didn't seem as devastated as Denny did after Phoenix the right. the previous year 
but what effect did that have on you for the final two races? Um, I, I don't know that it really had a, it didn't have, um, you know, a major effect, but it did let us know that those, those guys, Tony and his whole team had a, a really good mile and a half program. So we knew that we were going to have to bring our A game to Homestead and that's, and, and and as it turned out, that was, uh, you know, that was all true. Those guys were, were really fast at Homestead. They forced us to do everything we could. And, and um, you know, I think, that, I think that gave everybody a glimpse, you know, looking back on it, gave everybody a glimpse of how, how insane that Homestead race was going to be and how competitive it was going to be. Right here, Jeff. Jeff Owen, Sporting News. Call. Uh, Roush has got a really strong record here. All of you have won races, and you've won several of them. Do you feel like uh, you guys should win? One of you should win this race here, and how much confidence does that give all three of you? After this final practice, I felt that, that our Roush cars were very good. I don't feel that anyone was better. Uh, so it, it would be it'd be big for us to go get a win for Ford and for Roush and, and get this thing rolling. You know, we we've been running better for longer than we have ever since I've been here. So th this has been good and we need to, you know, I, I don't know that we need to rack up some wins, but it would sure be nice. It would, it would feel good. Any other questions right here, Carlos? Hey, Carl, uh, the past 10 winners here have all been top 10s in the points at the end of the year. This is a big name track. Is it tougher for an underfunded team to compete here? Is it just this track? Uh, are you thinking of one particular team, or? Yeah, the big four. It's you. It's Tony. It's it's um, uh, Gibbs. Those guys. It's, I'm sorry. One more time. I, I, maybe I misunderstood your question. You're asking me if, if it's tough for an underfunded team to compete. Yeah, here? the uh, you know well, four of you guys who are multiple winners here, are all in the top 15. Right. This, I, this I track think, produces big winners. Well, I think this track is very tough. I, you know, it just like a lot of the mile and a half, this one requires everything to be right. I mean, you have to have a big engine, you have to have a good pit crew, you have to qualify well. Running at night, you know, you have to, you have to be able to, to adjust the car and make it, um, you, and make it, you know, handle when the conditions change. All those things are, are tough, and, and I think that, you know, this race, even just the race itself, as it goes on, you get to see who's got their, you know, got their ducks in a row better than other guys. Anybody else? Right here. <laughs> Looking around the cameras here. Janine Cloud with Skirts and Scuffs. Just going back one more time to the race here in the fall. Looking back from where you are now, the build up to it, the promotion of it, does that add anything to it for you now, looking back at it? Did it make it more fun? Was it a good experience? Yeah, I mean that, that whole that whole battle was a. I mean that's something I I um, I value having been through. I mean it was it taught me a lot. It it was exciting. I made sure a couple times through those last few weeks to, to stop for a minute and say, Hey man, this is <laughs> this is pretty neat to be a part of. Um, and trust me, that's hard for a, a racer to do or a competitor to do because you're so you, know, you got to be so in the moment, but I I think after having the battle in 2008 with Jimmy, uh, the battle in 2005 with uh, with Jimmy and Greg, I I think I'm better now at being able to enjoy those things and say, hey, let me, you know, this isn't normal. This isn't stuff that's going to happen all the time. So um, I I think that that uh, the whole thing was just it was, it was pretty neat. Uh, you know, obviously it would have been neater if we'd have won, but but um, but I'll tell you, going through something like that, and being a part of it, I think teaches you how to be a a stronger competitor and how to how to control your energy and 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 focus on the right things. So I, I value all of that. We have one more question there, Bob. Go ahead, uh, Carl. You, I know you're a very private guy, so I was curious if you got, had any heads up that there was going to be anything about you in that book and how you felt just about the fact of. Past well, relationship being yeah. being out right. there. Well, I appreciate you asking me the questions. The hard part, you guys, is to even talk about it because it's, I mean, it's it's uh, it just it really caught me off guard, and it's kind of sad in a way to, for me to read that. Um, uh, it made me feel a little bit sad for uh, for Amanda that she was going through all that. So, um, but no, um, specifically. Um, when I I, uh, I heard somebody I think um, 
somebody told me a long time ago that she was going to write a book, and I thought that's good for her. That's awesome. Um, I mean, all the correspondence we've ever had between 2006 and now has all been good. I mean, like like I said, I considered us friends. So, so, um, but I want to be very clear that I'm not I'm not standing up here. I'm not going to bash her. I'm not going to say bad things about her because I didn't know all that stuff was going on. So. Um, you know, she's a mother, she's a wife, and she's someone that, that I, I cared about. And if, like I said, if, uh, if down the road she ever needs something from me, she's got it. Finish up right here. Steve. You talk about going back to the White House this week and how cool was it the last time you were there and what do you look forward to this time? Well, I'd really like to be the one standing there next to the president with my Sprint Cup trophy. So uh, I guess I'm one a couple spots closer. So um, it, it is nice, uh, you know, that the president's taking time to to honor our sport and uh, to honor Tony and and uh, and the other championship contenders. I, I think that that's pretty cool. And um, I know that his wife, uh, she had a really good time. The first lady did at, at the races in Homestead. So. Um, you know, it, uh, it, it'll be neat to go there. It's, uh, I think it's really important for all of us, everybody, to, to learn as much as we can about the political system and, and the, the leaders of, of our great country. Um, I don't know. I, the, the, there's so much to take in when you go there, and I think everybody has, for people who have been to the White House, you know that um, you know, there, there's a you have a preconceived kind of notion of how things are, but then to uh, to go there and see it and and stand there in a room, you know that uh, that uh, so many uh, great people have stood in and and to hear them tell the stories and to see the artwork on the walls and the, the history of the place is spectacular. And I'm I don't know as much about that history as I should, so it's it's always something that kind of spurs me to to go learn more, and I I think that's you know as an American that's really neat to go do. Final question comes from Marty Smith. Raise your hand there, Marty. We'll get you the mic. <coughs> Off to your right there, Carl. Thank you. <coughs> Marty Smith, ESPN. Uh, What's it like to sustain an optimum level of performance year upon year? Uh, sometimes we see when somebody has to do, for example, sorry to bring it back up, what Stewart did during the chase. Right. There's a tendency to fall off a bit and have a lull in the next season. They have not done that. Right. What's that? challenge like um, you know physiologically whenever you go through something real stressful and you know there's a lot of a lot of uh, anticipation and and either victory or defeat you know there's always there's that wind down period and it and I think that that everybody you know has to uh, to, to avoid that happening to avoid suffering from you know uh, from that you got to be you got to be pretty mentally tough you got to you got to have people around who realize that, uh, you know, success and achievement are not something that happens once. It's something that happens all the time, and that's that's what these great teams do. That's you know, if you look at Jimmy Johnson and those guys, I think they're the model of performance in sport under pressure constantly. I mean, that's it, you know, it, it's I don't, it's not easy, but it's simple to get yourself wound up for one thing and go do it, and then, whew, you know, that's over. But to to be able to do that year after year. I think is is very tough, and I think our sport particularly. Um, I think it is tough because every event is so big. There is only one winner. You know, even week to week to maintain that level of performance takes a lot of discipline. Carlos, you got one real quick. Okay. Hey, Carl, what do you think of the uh, Sports Center set you're sitting at there? Yeah, I didn't know what, uh, this is kind of nice. I, I, Samsung, I, I hope, is getting lots of uh, airtime. They've been really good to the sport, been great to me. Um, they've been a huge sponsor, so uh, I think that's kind of cool to spice it up a little bit. Carl, thanks for coming in here, and good luck this weekend, okay? All right, thanks Thank a lot, you. guys. I appreciate it.